Hey everybody, it's Angela with Gigi's Art Treasures. Welcome back for another video. Thank you so much for coming back and watching my channel. I truly, truly do appreciate each and every one of you. Tonight, I'm gonna to be making some bird ATCs for a swap that I'm on in Facebook. And I love making ATC cards. So for those of you who don't know, an ATC card is an artist trading card. They are two and a half by three and a half inches. And we're gonna be using this four by six uh, acid-free watercolor paper. So I got this, oh man, I think somebody actually sent this to me in a uh, happy mail. It's made by Seth Cole. It says, hashtag 30P. I'm not quite sure what that means. I'm not up on the paper language, to be honest with you. Maybe that means 30 pound. Um, anyway, so it's four by six. And then it says, hashtag 30P acid-free premium watercolor paper. And there's 15 sheets in this pad. So I'm gonna be cutting these down. I'm gonna be making four ATCs tonight. I'm gonna to be cutting these down into two and a half by three and a half. And then I have some text pages here that we're gonna be incorporating into the ATCs. And I'm gonna be using the Tim Holtz Wacky Birds. Wacky Birds? They're either called Crazy Birds or Wacky Birds. I call them Wacky Birds, but they may be called Crazy Birds. I will look this up and put it in the description below so that uh, you guys will know exactly which ones that I'm using, but they are the most adorable things. I just love them. And then I have these stamps here and I apologize. I do not know who makes these. These were also sent to me in a happy mail and they were sent just like this. So I'm going to be using some of these stamps possibly. Um, or I may dig out a different stamp. If I don't like what's on here, I'll dig out a different one. I'm just kind of winging it, but that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. So, so the first thing that I'm gonna do though, before I do get started, is I wanna cut my cards down into three and a half by two and a half. So these are four by six. Um, <clears throat> are they three by two and a half? I'm gonna double check that, hold on. Okay, I am correct. It's two and a half by three and a half. So I'm gonna need another one of these to make another card. So we're gonna make this, I wonder, maybe I can go this way. There's the three and a half. So this is three and a half wide. And if I go two and a half, I wonder if I can, ah, uh, I think I can get two of these out of here. Perfect. Maybe I don't have to get another piece of watercolor paper. Cause I did want to make four of these. So this might actually work out pretty darn good. So three and a half, oops. I think I did it this way, didn't I? So three and a half. That's right, because I had that skinny piece at the end. By two and a half. Okay. Whoops, forgot to take my paper off. <laughs> okay. So now we have our four cards here, and I'm actually gonna work on all four cards at one time. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't like this border. I always tear this border off. I never leave it on. Sorry if I was out of frame. I am now filming with my iPhone. Um, I'm trying to see if I like that better than filming with my Canon camcorder I mean that thing is gosh that thing is like eight or nine years old and I would like to get one of the really nice like DSL cameras or whatever but oh not this year unfortunately <laughs> it's not gonna be the time for that all right we're gonna lay that one sideways we'll keep that one for something extra later on 
But yeah, I really like making the ATCs. They're really fun and they're really easy to do. And I love this swap group that I'm in. They really make swapping so much fun. And we do a lot of really cool stuff in there. I'm just gonna tear this one down just a little bit. I don't like to cut the edges. I like that rough kind of edge on there because I don't want it to cover the whole card. I like the edge. So I don't cut them, I always tear them so I can get that jagged look on the sides. And I really don't care that my text is going sideways on these. You're probably not gonna see some of it anyway. Okay, so now what I have here in this jar, I have some Elmer's glue or craft glue. Now, if you're not in the US, you may refer to this as PVA glue and that's fine, but it's 60% glue, 40% water. And I use this as my collage. And I like to use it as my collage because it makes it really simple. But what I wanna do is grab a piece of paper that I use kind of as a mat. I took the big paper off of my desk because I thought it just made my videos look kind of crappy. I don't know. I was looking at it and I really just didn't like the way that that paper looked. Um, I just like this better. To me, it just looks cleaner, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to glue down this paper in kind of a decoupage fashion to these cards. Let me move these out of the way so I can use all of my space because even though I'm going to work on all four of them at the same time, I still need my space. I need my space, man. All right, there's one. Now I always put glue on the back side of the paper even though I am putting it down on a card that already has the glue on there. It just, to me, helps it adhere better and it helps it to not have any bubbles. And then I use my paintbrush to basically smooth it all out. And don't worry about using your brushes, guys. If you clean them up right away, you're not gonna ruin your brushes, so. Don't worry about using your, your brushes for glue. It'll be fine. Some of these book pages I pulled out of my book don't even have writing on the other side. It's like a half page or something. It's crazy. Okay, so I hope that everyone is doing well and staying safe. I uh, did not think that, and I don't know why I thought this, but I did not think that COVID was going to touch my family or my friends, but it did. And I found out just a couple of days ago that a very, very good friend of mine has COVID and I get very worried about her anyway because she has COPD and I do worry so, so much about my friend. And when I found out that she had COVID, I was crushed. Now this is a lady who wears a mask all the time. She is very, very careful. So I, I can't even imagine how she could have contracted COVID. And it's a very, very scary thing, but we just have to be diligent, you guys. We have to make sure we're washing our hands. We have to make sure we're wearing a mask. We have to do everything that we possibly can to try to keep ourselves well and safe. And that's all I'm gonna say on that subject. So here are our four cards. I'm gonna dry these really quickly and then I'll be right back. Okay, now that these are good and dry, and close up my glue so I don't 
let it get all thick and whatnot because that'll happen. Now I'm going to be using watercolor. I have my art box over here uh, that I created and I'll post a video, just a really quick speed video. If you, if you go to my Instagram, you can see it there. I just did a really quick, I didn't film making it because it was a one of those really relaxing projects that I just wanted to do. Um, but I have my watercolors over here and the watercolors that we're gonna be using are the Jane Davenport Brights. And I kind of fixed my art box up a little bit. So this actual box here has my uh, ink tent spars in there um, just because of the way that I set my box up. But this is the container with the Jane Davenport Brights and I really love the bright colors of this. I just took the watercolors out and I, if you, like I said, if you look at my video, you can see how I set my art box up. Um, maybe I'll put in some um, screenshots of that at the very end so you can see what I'm talking about. And, uh, but I'm gonna be using the Jane Davenport Brights. I'm gonna be using Stazon ink to stamp with. And the reason why is because I love the way the Stazon ink stamps. I think it looks amazing. And this is a brand new pad, so I have to remember to be really super careful with this because uh, it will put out a lot of ink. It's very, very, very pigmented. So we're going to start with this guy because I think he's just adorable. And I'm just going to take my ink and I'm going to stamp this little boy up really good. And I'm going to try not to put too much ink because this is a brand new pad. It is very, very pigmented and I don't want it squashing out all over my that's just gross when it gets all when the ink gets on there and it's all like blobby and whatnot Ugh, I hate that it drives me crazy so we're just gonna stamp our bird oh look how cute look how cute and I'm gonna use this paper to kind of stamp off with Um, all right, so now I'll turn these over. I think I'm going to switch out. I'm going to switch out my paper because some of these ATCs are going to get swapped. Some of them I'm going to keep, maybe send to a friend later. And I don't want to have the stamping off that I'm doing to get on the back of the card. So I'm going to. I'm gonna change what I'm doing. Oh, this one looks like a little owl. Look how cute he is. Actually, he is a little owl. Just adorable. I'm just all messed up over here, y'all. <laughs> Yikes. See, I just keep dropping things. I'm just all over the place. All right, we're gonna stamp the little owl down. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. Okay. And what's the next one I wanna use? Let's see. So I have this one, I have the owl. This one kinda looks like a chicken. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> Look how adorable he is. I hope you guys can see that on camera. Just absolutely adorable. Oh my gosh, he's so precious. These are so cute. I am so in love with these stamps. And I've not used this one before, so I'm going to use this little guy because he's too cute not to use. Can you see him through this? Oh, he's so cute. If you guys have never smelled stays on ink, I know this is weird and random. It's like, who goes around smelling their ink? But you can't help it. But if you've never smelled stays on ink, it reminds me of like cherry almond. That's the way it smells to me. It smells... It smells really good. I mean, I know some inks can stink. Not this one. And I'm gonna show you in a minute why I love the Stazon inks. 
and the way that they work with watercolor, they don't move. They don't move y'all. And I love, I love the effect of that. So we're gonna put our ink over here. We're done with that for right now. And we are going to get to painting. So I think our little chicken is the first one I'm gonna do. And we're gonna use the Jane Davenport Brights. Now I have, I have a little um, palette up here in my art box also, because I don't wanna just use a stark yellow for this little guy. I wanna actually use and have it be a little bit more of like an orange-ish yellow. So I'm gonna mix the colors together up here in my palette. And I'm sorry, I know y'all can't see that. I don't like this brush. Hang on, y'all. Let's try this one. There we go, that's way better. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I am not doing wet on wet here. I probably could if I wanted to, but I want the pigment. I want the brightness of the color. So I've decided to just go straight to the paper I think they call that wet on dry. I am not a professional watercolorist. I think they call that wet on dry. I'm not positive. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red now and I'm just gonna go in on the edges. Ugh. And just kind of give it a little bit of definition, I guess, or shading or Whatever you want to call it. I got to grab a paper towel. And if you get too much color and you want to take some off, this is the one thing that I do like about watercolor. If you get too much color and you want to take some off, it's real easy to do. You just dab your brush and then you wipe it off on your paper towel. Super easy. I'm not worried about any of this work that I'm doing being proper colors. Um, I think because these guys are a little bit quirky, they don't have to be their proper color. They can be any color they actually want to be. I could paint them purple if I wanted to and be completely happy with that. Now, one of the things that I love about the Jane Davenport Brights is that they're not completely opaque. They can, they are a bit translucent because obviously they are watercolors. But even though they're nice bright colors and they're very pigmented, it still allows you to see this text paper behind it. And I really like that. Just give him some lips. There we go. And then his little eyes. I think I'm gonna make his little eyes green. But I wanna be super careful about how much paint I put on my brush. I just wanna barely touch into that white part. And if I mess up, I can go and dab it off. And you can dab it off with your brush or you can dab it off with your tissue. And I'm gonna leave his 
the whites of his eyes exactly as they are. And we're gonna set him over here to dry. This little guy, oh my gosh. <laughs> He's so precious. Let's start with his little beak because that beak is just so cute. We're gonna start with that. And I'm gonna get me some yellow and a little bit of that red again. I'm gonna paint me up some orange or not paint me up some orange. I'm gonna mix me up some orange. And we're just gonna put that right there on the beak. I've not done a real time video in a while. And if you guys don't like that, it's totally cool. You can mute it and put it on fast forward, you know, speed up the the playback here on YouTube and just watch watch it in silence or continue to watch the uh, the real time, but sometimes I enjoy doing a real time video. wanted that to be just a bit more orange than red so I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow in there and we're just gonna let that rest for a second and dry I'm gonna come back to him I'm gonna set him over here now our owl our owl is just as precious as precious can be I think we will do him what color is this oh that's an indigo I think we should do our owl in indigo. How cute is this? I love this. I love this color. It is so pretty. Let's see. Oh my goodness, you guys, I had to go and change my shirt because I swear I was about to die up in here. We have the heat on, obviously, because it's winter time and it is quite cold in Tennessee right now. And oh, I had a sweatshirt on because we went out grocery shopping just a little bit ago and oh man, I think I was about to die. I'm not even kidding you. Had the door closed so that I could have privacy with my video because my partner Dennis is out there watching TV and uh, I didn't want to disturb him but I got two vents in this room and it gets quite warm in here so let's see I think I want to do a little shading with this blue perhaps oh yeah that looks really pretty oh I love the way this looks He's so quirky. Look at his eyes. They're so cute. Now I'm going to tell you guys, I am not a professional watercolorist. I paint the way ever, I paint whatever way I want to paint. I don't claim to be a professional. My art, I do for pure enjoyment and pure fun. And I do not claim to be any kind of professional. I just like to do it for you guys and for myself and for relaxation. So. If I'm not painting something correctly, or if I'm not doing something correctly, I certainly do appreciate constructive criticism, um, but don't call me out too bad on it. <laughs> Cause I don't claim to be perfect. So I'm not trying to teach art or anything like that. I just simply do this for complete and total entertainment value for myself. Okay, so his little face, what am I gonna do with his little face? I'll to put some more of this I really like this turquoise green. 
just want to kind of blend some of that in there. Maybe let that go right into his belly. Now I am taking some watercolor classes on Skillshare and I do enjoy that very much. So I am practicing and trying to learn and no, this is not a sponsored video by Skillshare, but I will tell you that um, if you haven't taken classes on there, I would highly recommend that you do um, because it's a really great place. They have like 20 some odd thousand videos on there of people just teaching stuff and it's, it's amazing. Like you can go in there and learn anything. So I'm taking some watercolor classes on there right now. And I just started, so like I said, I'm not claiming to be perfect and it's okay. I don't think art is about perfection anyway. I've had so many people say to me, oh, I could never paint, I could never do that. And the truth of the matter is, is you can do anything as long as you give it a try. And being an artist is not about being a perfectionist. Or, I'm sorry, being an artist is not about being per perfect. At least not in my eyes. Look how precious he is. I don't know which one I'm going to send to my swap partner yet. I want to come back to this guy. I'm going to dry his nose for a second. Just because I don't want that orange to blend in. And this little guy, I'm gonna make him green just because, oh, he's so cute. I just feel like he should be green. And I'm gonna mix just a little bit of this darker green in there. Just a little. I tell you, these stamps that Tim Holtz comes out with are just amazing. Um, I love, I love his stuff. Love it. Some of his stamps are just so adorable and all the sayings. And I feel like that these stamps, the ones that I showed you earlier, I feel like these are Tim Holtz because they kind of are in the same line. If you know, please let me know if you can put a comment down below and let me know if those are Tim Holtz. I would appreciate it because somebody sent them to me as a gift and there was no wrapper, no, nothing. Um, there was no, pa uh, what do you call it, packaging. It was just in an envelope and said, hey, I had these extras and thought you might enjoy them, which I loved. I mean, thank you so much. And uh, it was, it's been years. I've had them for a while now. And I, I have no idea if they're his or not. Sorry, Tim. Sorry, I don't know. A little bit too much there. Oh, see, look what I did. I went over. Sometimes you can Sometimes you can erase it with water. Okay. Look how cute. Now, seems weird, but I'm going to make his eyes yellow. <laughs> I'm going to make this guy's eyes yellow. Because he is crazy. He's a wacky bird. He deserves to have yellow eyes. Okay, we're going to go in with a little bit more of this green and turquoise. I'm going to try to spread a little bit more of that down here. Blend that in a little bit more. Grab some more of that green and try to blend that out. And we're going to call it good on this guy. All right, one more, and then we'll move on to the rest of it. I'm going to make this guy 
a really pretty kind of dark magenta. So if that's the case, maybe this one's a girl. It's a female bird. One thing I found out I did not know, and this is something I learned in my late part of my life, was that the birds that have the most color are the males. Just learned that from my honey not too long ago. And I thought I had heard that about peacocks, but I didn't realize it was that way with all birds. I can use a little bit of that orange in here for her beak. I'm just going to hop over and use a different because I don't have, well, I do have purple, but it's not the same color of purple in the uh, Jane Davenport Brights. This is a different purple and I don't know, this is more of a, a kind of a earthy color of purple, more of a, like a muted color of purple, something that I would much prefer over the brighter purple. I'm gonna use that one. And that's just a very basic, this purple I'm using is from a very basic art set that I have for watercolor. I think this beak could be a bit darker. And we're gonna make these, we're gonna make these feathers a combination of this magenta and this purple. Just gonna kind of put little splashes of that magenta in there along with the purple. I think that'll look nice. Whoops, work on it. See, that's what happens, y'all. Go a little bit too much on the brush, get a little bit overzealous, that's what happens. Now what I'm doing is I'm just taking and dipping my brush into the watercolor palette and I'm not putting too much water because I want to get that high pigment on the end of my brush and I'm using it to just shade the edges of my bird to kind of give it a little bit of a gradient look. I kind of like the way that looks. And I'm going to do the same thing with the purple around her face. Just a little bit of a gradient. Some nice deeper shading around the edges. Make it look a little bit more three-dimensional in my opinion. There we go. And for the eyes, I'm thinking we're going to go with this really pretty owl, this really pretty blue. Sorry about that, I just hit my darn elbow. We're gonna go with this really pretty blue for the eyes. I think that looks gorgeous. A little bit of a deeper shading around the edges. And there we go. So here is, in case they got out of frame, our little quirky birds. Now I want to see if I want to put words 
That might be cute. Live the life you imagined. It's gonna have to go right over the feet though. Do I wanna do that? Maybe on this one. That might be cute. I think some of these are just gonna be too big, so I may not be able to use this stamp set. Let me see what else I have. Well, I don't really have. So here's one that says, just believe, but these are Christmas. Here's one that says, hello friend. Oh, here's one that says, a little birdie told me, okay. So this will be, this will be good. So let me position this little guy. So a little birdie told me, but where would it go? Should it go on the side right here? It's not really a lot of, oh, wait, this one, it could go right there. Okay, so we'll do that one. Position it over it, make sure it's centered, and just press it down good. Oh, that's cute. I actually think I want to do that on a couple of them. So let's do, I think we'll do that one here too. Because I might send this one to my friend. Oh, how cute. I think she'll like it. All right, so we have that one. And then I'm gonna do one called Hello Friend. And I'll just use that on the other two because I really don't have a lot of sentiment stamps, to be honest. I should work on that, but I'm trying to have a no spend year. <laughs> I can't have a no spend year if I keep finding things that I need to spend money on. So let's see, I'm gonna put that up here. Hello friend. Oh, so cute. And I'll put this one up here. Hello friend. Oh, I love it. I know I'm like, oh. <laughs> Adorable. So we'll put this back there. Now what I want to do is I have these pastes and I, I love these pastes. These are wonderful. So these are the uh, Art Alchemy Antique Brilliance. This one's Amethyst Magic. This one is Mystic Turquoise. I have one in Heather Hills, which is beautiful. And then Rose Gold. So I wanna use these pastes around the edges excuse me, just to give it a little bit of that antique -y kind of look, or I'm not quite sure what the word is, but I know that I like the way that it looks, so that's the look I'm gonna go for. So this rose gold, I'm gonna put on this one. And guys, you just need the littlest amount. I'm not kidding you, you do not need much at all. It does not take much. Rub a little on with one finger and rub it in with another. And if it helps, you can set it down on your desk. And it's just so pretty. I love the way this looks. Don't love the way it smells, but I love the way it looks. It smells weird to me. I can't even describe the, the way it smells. 
I have no words. So that's that one, but I think I want to do, I'll do a little bit more up here to have a little bit more of a deeper, a deeper look. I want it to be worth it. I'm going to do it. I want it to be worth it. And what I love about this is you don't need very much at all. Not at all. It gives it this nice little sheen and it's just adorable. And make sure you seal these up good so that they don't dry out on you. Make sure the lid is on there all the way. And let's see, I think we'll do this one next. And I'm gonna use this Mystic Turquoise. This is so, so beautiful. Now, if there's oil on the top, like you see here, don't be afraid to get in there with your tissue and wipe that off. It's not gonna hurt anything to just get in there and wipe that off. That way you can get down to the actual product, what you're looking for. Now this one, this one's kind of strange. This one looks blue. And in some cases, I guess, depending on the way you look at it in the light, it is kind of that turquoise color. But when you first put it on, look at it. Doesn't it look like it's turning brown? Like that's weird. But here you can see it's kind of got a blue sheen. And when you look at it a certain way in the light, I don't know if you guys can see that, but when you look at it a certain way in the light, it does turn blue. Maybe that's why they call it mystic. Because it's mystic. It's very pretty though. I like the way it looks. a new paper towel. Okay. I'm gonna lay that one there. We have this green one and we have the hello friend, the little chicken. Hmm. Ooh, this is another one. This one is amethyst. Oh, I wonder if I could use a little bit of that one on here. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. It's kind of the same. It was blue, but then it's like when you put it on there, it kind of turns purple. That's crazy. All right. We won't go too crazy with that one because we already have that really pretty blue on there. I saw these on another YouTuber's channel and she was using them and I really didn't go like into great depths of how she was using it. She was using it on, um, oh, what do you call it? Like, um, I can't think of the name of it, mixed media collage, something like that. And she was using the cogs and the wheels and lace and gluing it all down. And I, I, I think Finnabar, that's who it was, Finnabar. She uses these sometimes, and oh my gosh, some of the work that she does, wow, really blows me away. Just really blows me away. But I didn't go into great detail of like how to use them. I just bought them, and so I've been holding on to them for a little while. They've been just sitting up in my in my little thing up there, and uh, I just decided one day to break them out and start using them. And I'm glad I did because I love them. And I like this how when you hold this one the same way, you hold it off to the off to the side and you can see the amethyst, but when you look at it dead on, it's almost like a bronze. Looks really cool. Okay, this is the last one. And this one is uh, Heather Hills. Whoops, sorry. This one is kind of a really pretty lilac. I love this one too. love the way that looks it's just beautiful
See what I like about the stays on ink, you guys? See how I was able to use the watercolor and I was able to stamp with it and I can go over it and I can rub with this other product right over the top of it and it does not affect it at all. Not even a bit. Okay, so that is it for our ATCs tonight. Look how cute these are, you guys. Now, if you make some like this, please do me a favor and send me a message. Um, you can join me over on my Facebook group at Gigi's Art Treasures. I'll put the link down below for you guys. But join me over there and show me pictures of what you make. If you make some ATC cards, I want to I wanna see them. Share them with me. But I hope you enjoyed this video tonight. And if you did, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can get notified every time I upload a video. And if you don't mind, if you did enjoy this video, would you please be so wonderful and kind and hit that thumbs up button. It helps my algorithm and I'm trying so desperately to grow my channel. Well, I don't want to use the word desperate. That just sounds terrible. But I do want to grow my channel. <laughs> and I do want this to be, you know, a, a, a source of income for me. And so the more people that like my videos, the more people see them and the more Google finds me and the more YouTube um, works with the algorithm to help me get seen more. So I do this for fun. Um, it is not my only source of income, but I do certainly love being here. And thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad you guys came back to spend the evening with me and watch me make these cards. I so enjoyed spending the evening with you and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.